Solving problems with linear graphs. I'm going to work through two problems that can be solved with a linear graph and its rule. One has been very structured, so telling us what to do, and one is left a little bit open-ended. So the first one, a hiker walks at a constant speed of four kilometers per hour for four hours. Now they're telling us what to use for the letters in our rule. They've said use T for time in hours and D for distance in kilometers. And we've got a bunch of questions to answer. Draw a table of values, draw a graph, write a rule that links distance with time, use your rule to solve some problems. Now anytime we get a word problem, what you need to look at is what are your dependent and independent variables. And the easiest way to do that is to ask which one depends on the other. So I've got time in hours and distance in kilometers. Now there's a trick with distance and time. Time is going to be your independent variable and so distance will be your dependent variable and it's going to be like that any time you've got distance and time but just so we can see why the distance you've traveled depends on how long you've been walking for you don't say how long you're walking for depends on the distance you've traveled it's usually a little more obvious than that which is why I'm giving you the rule that time is independent how far you walk depends on how long you've been walking for and when you hear that depends on you know we've got dependent now when we know we've got dependent so our distance is dependent when we do our table of values we know we always start with our independent variable on top time and distance they want a table of values up to t equals 4 make sure you include 0 so the table of values is going to say what distance would I walk if I walked for 0 hours well that one's easy that's 0 how far would I have walked if I walked for one hour? I'm doing four kilometers an hour, so that will be four. Two hours, I'd do eight kilometers. Three hours would be 12. And at four hours, I would have walked 16 kilometers. Sorry about the extra background noise there. So, we've drawn our table of values. Draw a graph using your table of values. Now you don't have to go all the way up to 16 in individual grid squares here. It's quite okay to have a different scale on the Y compared to the X. Our X scale should be 1 because we're just going up by 1's on the X. And because I know that my distance, oops, this is time, is going up in hours, I can say time in hours. So you label your graph if you can. Now the y-axis, find a nice easy value to go up by. Now you just can't copy the numbers here, but it just so happens that these do all go up by 4. And going up by 4 is just fine. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And this is distance. And I'm going to label that distance in kilometers. Plot your points. And join your line. Now one of the reasons that I only use this one quadrant that I don't go down to the negatives is that it doesn't make very much sense to say what if I walked a negative time or a negative distance. So often in real life situations we'll only use the positive quadrant. 
Next request, write a rule linking distance with time. Now, if you're feeling very clever, you'll remember that the number on its own, we get when x, or t in this case, is 0. It's going to be 0. And the number in front of the x is going to be the number that we go up or down by for the y value. So that's going to be a 4. But let's get this sorted out, taking a little more time. When you write your rule, you start with your dependent variable. And it's often easier if you start in words. Distance equals, and it's going to be 4 kilometers for every hour. So that's 4 times time. And that means that I've got the 4 in that I knew I needed to have. Oh, I see. I lost my E there. So, if we then take that down to just a rule in letters, distance equals 4t is our rule. So it's often easier if you start with words and we start with our independent variable Sorry, our independent variable is here, our dependent variable is out the front because we want to find out our dependent variable. Check that your rule works. 4 times 0 is 0. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Your rule works. Then use your rule to find the distance traveled in 2.5 hours of walking. Write your rule. Distance equals 4 times time. Substitute on what we know. We know it's 2.5 hours. Distance equals 2 point f sorry, 4 times 2.5. And 2.5 and times 4, distance equals, oh dear, 10 kilometers. So I'm just going to change this question here to 12 kilometers because obviously I wrote one that wasn't going to be very helpful. So, it, because obviously this would give us the same answer of two and a half hours, and this is a dodgy question. I should have planned better. Use your rule to find the time taken to travel 12 kilometers. So we write our rule, and instead, I want to find time. I know distance. 12 equals 4 times time. It's often easier if we put our times back in. Solve the one-step equation to discover, divide by 4 on both sides, time equals 3 hours. So you can use your rule to solve problems. The next problem I've given us is this one. My rainwater tank has 2,000 litres in it. I use 150 litres a day. If it doesn't rain, how long before I run out of water? So. We start by asking which one is dependent and which one is independent. And the easiest way, we look for our variables. There's how much water is in my tank. So, water in tank, and that's in litres. And days. Time in days. Which one of those depends on the other? Time, as I said, almost always independent. And if we check how much water is in the tank depends on how many days it's been. Whereas if you tried the other way, how many days it's been depends on how much water in the tank. No, doesn't work. So this one is dependent. Now all it's asking is how long before I run out of water. We might want to draw a graph. We might want to do a table of values. We definitely want to get a rule. So I start with, let's, let's go straight to the rule because I start with my dependent variable, the, the thing I want to find out about the amount of water in the tank. 
Now, I don't have a letter. They didn't give me a letter for what this means, for, for, for my uh, variable. Time can usually be t. So I could say let time equal t. Because if I'm just going to say, look, we'll use t as time, I've got to tell people, hey, t is time. And the water in the tank, well, let's let volume be V. So I need a rule that links V and T. And I'm wanting to find out the volume. So that's my dependent variable, so I start with it. And you can just write it in words, however it helps. Amount in the tank equals. Start with what you're starting with. I've got 2,000 litres in there. Don't put the... Um, units in and then I lose 150 litres every day minus 150 per day so often it's easier if you set it out in words and then say well what does that look like using my letters the amount in the tank is my V I'm still starting with 2,000 and taking away 150 for every day. That's 150 times the number of days, so it's 150 T. And that's my rule. The volume in my water tank is 2,000 minus 150 T. So every day, I'm going to lose another 150. If I wanted to do a table of values, I could. The question is, how long before I run out of water? Now, which one of those will be zero when I run out of water? It won't be the time in days. It'll be the water in the tank. So, I run out when V equals zero. So, we're going to take the rule, V equals 2000 minus 150T, and substitute in zero where the volume is. What I want to know now is what time that will be, or how many days, and so I've got to solve this equation for t. So we use reverse order of operations, take away this 2000 first. Well that goes, means I'm going to get negative 2000 equals minus 150t. Now this one's a bit tricky because I've got to get t on its own and it's multiplied by negative 150. So I'm actually going to have to times by negative 100. No, I'm not. It's multiplied, so I have to divide by negative 150 on both sides. That calls for a calculator. negative 2000 divided by negative 150 is 13.3 repeated days so t equals 13.3 recurring now t is time in days 13 days is nice and easy one third of a day because 0.3 is one third we probably want that in hours. 24 hours in a day, one third of that is eight. So, 13 days and eight hours until I run out of water. So, if it doesn't rain within about 12 days, I'd probably get better get the water truck in, hadn't I? So your steps are identify dependent and independent variables, use those to write a rule for the dependent variable, and then solve the problems by substituting.